Hi, and uh, welcome to my second video. This is week two of robotics in Blender. As you can see, um, I have Blender running on uh, my PC, and this is uh, the real time viewport. And over here, well, actually, I'll show you, this is the model of a robotics platform that I just quickly threw together, which is actually pretty much a simulation of this particular robot. And these are two four-axis robotic arms composed of three standard size servos and one micro servo on the, on the end of arm there. <clears throat> Two lasers just to assist with visual aid and tracking how they're moving and calibrations and other things of that matter. So what I'm going to do, um, this has actually come a long way since the last video where instead of just manipulating objects I've actually created armatures. And these armatures are constrained through inverse kinematics to articulate in a particular way that uh, best mimics that model over there. Um, there are, are immediately obvious two handles which I have the right arm and the left arm and then two other handles focus. which are the rotations of the end of arm, so left rotation, right rotation. <clears throat> okay, so everything should be running right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these handles. Um, now you can see the orientation <clears throat> is pretty much at zero, zero, zero everywhere. That is also true in the model. Now, it's a little difficult with one hand, so just give me a moment to kind of position things. Okay. So, say for instance, um, I would like to move the left arm, the one closest to us, uh, in such a particular manner as to where it, uh, the tip just touches that metal base. So, here in Blender, what I would do is quite simply grab the handle, which I already have, but uh, I'll do it again, and um, G to move. Now, as I'm moving this, I don't know if you can hear them in the background there, but these servos are actually moving in the same orientation, in the same manner. So let me get this close to the metal base, zoom in a little bit. Um, now you can see it's pretty much the same thing. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab again, and I'm going to actually make contact to that base. So listen. So, that's just a demonstration of the calibration. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. It's close enough for, I don't know, hobbyist robotic systems. So, now I, I also have more complex uh, motions, ability to move in more complex ways, but uh, that would typically take a few minutes or even a few hours to create an animation or as I call it a sequence that uh, would utilize them in such a way but uh, for now
as you can see, they work pretty well. Um, one of the main problems that I'm having actually, and it's, it's really not anything that I have done, it's more or less a constraint issue with the, with the armature is it snaps around a lot and this causes a lot of problems um, I'll see if I can do one I've done it so much it's not gonna hurt them but uh, say I go up 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 to a point yep and then it snaps which really makes them kinda fidgety but other than that they seem to work great so that's the left arm articulating around oh, see I snapped again and to be very careful when I do that. Yeah. And I'm not exactly sure how to supplement that issue, but uh, I'm working towards it. Now you see they're a little jittery. That is mainly Blender. Um, as you can see right now, I'm in a textured mode. So I have lighting and other visual aids to help me out, but uh, say I put it into just uh, plain, I don't know, solid. Yeah. <clears throat> so, now the update intervals are much shorter, it runs a lot smoother. Oh, and uh, furthermore, the reason that it's, it's very shaky is mainly because the, um, uh, the building materials that I use uh, consist a lot of, of double-sided tape and um, other non-industrial standard practices. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can see it's it's very flimsy. But those are things I can take care of later. At, at the moment though, it's it's mainly the, the software interface and uh, the motion sequencer that I'm trying to demonstrate. Um, also, full screen makes it a little faster as well. So. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck this one up. And I'm going to grab the right arm just to show you that, uh, so I tucked the left up, and I'm going to grab the handle for the right, and uh, this one also responds in real time. So I'm going to tuck both of them up. Now, <clears throat> this was just uh, one well, since I'm just looking at it from one side, I can only move it in that direction. But if I, say, go to the top and uh, grab these handles here, I can also rotate. Now, that is the main articulation of the arm. However, I do have two more controls, which are the left and right rotate options. This is the end of arm rotation, basically the hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this along Y. You can see it updating in the model. But it also rotates in real life. Uh, again, like the last video, this is all wireless. Those are the high speed Zigbees serial radios. <clears throat> um, and
a wired connection. Um, right now I've got everything timed pretty good for these at uh, a baud rate of, I think it was, I can't remember, 57,600 or something, and, uh, and a, 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 a delay time of 0 0.01 seconds. So, <clears throat> seems to work pretty well. I haven't had any major issues with the communication link. Uh, the only hiccups that I've had is those uh, are, are those constraints um, snapping around, and uh, that is bearable, especially if you're making up a sequence, um, because then you simulate it first before you ever command the robots to move. So that is my progress as of now. Again, this is the second week, um, and uh, I'm fairly impressed with how easy it's gone, and uh, and very impressed with the uh, 3D interface that Blender provides, and um, the way that I can interface with it to create some very dynamic, fluid, complex motion profiles and, well, since these targets are in real time and they're just things that I could ultimately uh, move from, ex from, from an external source, I could bring in data, say, from, uh, from, well, even from that, I could bring in a point cloud and do some, like, a comparative algorithm to uh, try to identify shapes in the real world and their locations and then possibly bring that into Blender for these guys to track or, or be aware of. Uh, that's simple. I mean, not simple, but that's like um, the future thing. It's not, I, I haven't gotten into any detail with that yet, but as of now, uh, the motion control is coming up. It's working somewhat decently. I'm going to actually reset these to their home positions, so let's go clear transform. Put that there. Clear transform. All. And there you go. So, um, I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, I'm going to keep working on this a little bit. I have actually gotten over a huge uh, um, difficulty in, in, in a few regards, but uh, um, I'm, I'm making strides and things are, are working, so I'm continue, uh, planning to continue on this for a little while until I may actually have something viable for mm, use in a, an industrial application or an assembly application or just general RC servo, like, RC hobbyist type things. I don't even know yet. I had somebody ask me what is my ultimate goal. Um, I didn't reply back to him, but uh, there really is no goal. Um, the goal here is just to see how well Blender can control robotic systems. And uh, so far, it hasn't let me down. So I'm going to uh, cut it off here, but um, if you guys have any questions or if you're interested, feel free to email me or leave a message. I'm always looking at them, and um, I love the feedback. Either positive or negative, doesn't really matter. So, thank you very much for uh, taking a look, and um, yeah, and uh, hope you enjoy it. See ya.